This video demonstrates how to perform measurement corrections. The first portion of this video will discuss the temperature and pressure corrections required for total stations. Let's take a look at this example. Given a temperature of 95 degrees Fahrenheit and a pressure of 30.9 inches mercury, what will the air be in a distance of 5,280 feet? In order to find the air, the difference from the standard temperatures and pressures for specific equipment is required. First convert the temperature from degrees Fahrenheit to degrees Celsius. Next find the difference from the standard temperature. The standard temperature for the purpose of this example is 15 degrees Celsius, as seen highlighted in blue. Second, convert the pressure from inches of mercury to millimeters of mercury. For the purpose of this example, round the, to the nearest whole number, 785. Then find the difference from the standard pressure. The standard pressure for this example is 760 millimeters mercury, as seen highlighted in blue. This is a standard distance air graph for temperature and pressure correction. Using the differences from the standard temperature and pressure found before, the exact distance air in parts per million can be determined. A temperature difference greater than 10 degrees Celsius is not included on this graph. So in order to find the air for this example, extrapolation is required. Using extrapolation, it can be determined that the distance air due to temperature is 20 parts per million. Then determine the distance air due to pressure. Extrapolation is not required for this example. The resulting distance air due to pressure is negative 9 parts per million. Combining the temperature and pressure air results in a total correction. The total correction is positive 11 parts per million or 0.0000. .00 zero zero one one feet per feet. To find the amount of air per a certain distance, multiply the total correction determined from the graph before by the distance given in the initial problem. Air can come from many places. These next few equations demonstrate the distance air that occurs when measuring with steel tape. There are three major sources of air, systematic, natural, and personal. Systematic air is air due to calibration in equipment, manufacturing, or repair. Natural air is the wear and tear that occurs on tape from the environment it is used in. Personal air is human air that comes from misreading or improperly laying the tape. Erroneous length air is the most common form of systematic air. It is accounted for using this equation. Length correction equals the difference between the actual tape length and the tape length reading all over the tape length reading multiplied by the total length measured. Temperature variation is one of the forms of natural air that occurs on steel tape. This equation is used to account for that. Temperature correction equals a constant K multiplied by the difference between the ambient temperature and the temperature at which the tape was standardized at, then multiplied by the total length measured. The constant K in this equation is the coefficient of thermal expansion for steel tape. There is a different coefficient for Celsius and Fahrenheit for easy use of the equation in both units. Pull correction is needed when the tape is pulled with a tension greater than the tension at which it was calibrated. The equation used to calculate this is the pull correction is equal to the difference between the tension at which it was pulled for measurement and the tension at which it was calibrated, multiplied by the total length measured then divided by the cross-sectional area and the modulus of elasticity. Lastly, sag occurs when a steel tape is not supported along its entire length. The equation used to calculate the distance lost to sag is the sag correction is equal to the weight of the tape squared multiplied by the length of the tape measured cubed divided by 24 times the tension squared. The negative sign in front of the equation is important in this case because SAG always lessens the actual distance measured. After calculating all of the corrections previously shown, the true length measured can now be found. In order to do this, all of the corrections must be summed up and added to the total length measured. The newly calculated distance is the true length measured. In order to demonstrate all of the types of corrections learned previously, let's do an example. Given a standard 100-foot steel tape supported throughout and held at a standard tension of 14.7 pounds 
was found to be actually 100.018 feet long. To measure a distance from A to B, the tape was held horizontal and supported at the ends with a tension of 21.5 pounds. Using the information given and the chart below, the true length of this example can be found. For quicker calculation, separate the error calculations into the necessary equations. The first category, part A, is a tape length correction. In this example, the error due to tape length is found to be a positive distance of 0 0.0358 feet. The distinction of an error being positive or negative is important in error correction. Make sure to keep track of signs. Part B is temperature correction. In the United States, the temperature at which steel tape is standardized is 68 degrees Fahrenheit. In this example, the two measurements had different temperatures at the exact time of measurement and must be calculated separately. The combined error resulting from the measurements is negative 0.0121 feet. Part C is the pull correction. The standard cross-section can be found by measurement, calculation, or obtained from the manufacturer. For the purposes of this example, it is 0.0078 inches squared. The resulting pull correction from this example is a positive 0 0.0060 feet. Part D is the sag correction. The standard weight for steel tape also can be found by measurement, calculation, or obtained by the manufacturer. But for the purposes of this example, it is 0 0.0266 pounds per foot. The error due to sag for this segment is negative 0 0.0638 feet. Much like temperature correction, sag correction must be calculated separately for each section. This is because the equation calls for the unsupported length segment. The two length segments measured are different, so the correction cannot just be doubled and must be calculated separately. The combined error from sag in both segments is negative 0.1255 feet. Now that all error corrections have been found, the true length can be calculated. Out of all the error corrections in this example, the side correction seems to have the most effect on the distance. This is why the resulting true length is 198.823 feet, a distance less than measured.